Good evening and welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Rob Dew, and today's date is September 21st, 2012, which is a Friday. And we're about to have an amazing show. Strap yourselves in. Tonight, two very special InfoWars Nightly News reports. Up first, Rob Dew goes in depth on how the environmentalist death cult is brainwashing your kids into hating themselves. Then, as Agenda 21 slams into Texas, greedy developers set to pad their pockets, plundering an Austin treasure. Plus, a mother and daughter exercise their Second Amendment rights by using a pink gun to fight crime. All that and more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. So we got two big special reports. One of them, Alex, literally sprung on me just a couple hours ago. We got an amazing interview with a libertarian uh, running for Congress in uh, Texas, taking over Lloyd Doggett's spot, hopefully. And uh, Jakari Jackson's got some interesting Second Amendment news. But first, we move to the dung beetle. Janet Napolitano, executive order on cybersecurity is close to completion. And this is out of the hill newspaper. Homeland Security Secretary Janet Napolitano on Wednesday said the cybersecurity executive order that the White House is drafting is close to completion. Well, you guys remember how Barack Obama said several times, we're going to try to figure out how to do things without Congress's help. If they don't want to do it, I'm going to do it. In fact, I think it was last night on Dan Badandi's piece on uh, security of slavery that he put that in there. And I actually, or was it Jakari's? I think it was Jakari's Judge Dread piece. That's what it was. We got so many special reports coming out. We got so many great reporters working out. I can hardly keep track of it. And that's why I've hardly been doing the news. I've been trying to get these people in front of the camera, getting them looking good and making it happen. So moving on with this piece of trash here. At the Senate Homeland Security and Government Affairs Committee hearing, Napolitano said the executive order is still being drafted in the interagency process. That means they're figuring out how to really screw everybody out there. And it's close to completion, depending on a few issues that need to be resolved at the highest levels. Yeah, what the highest levels are, that's what corporations will be able to contact Department of Homeland Security and say, this person's posting something bad, and I think it's bad, and go after them and shut their website down. And they've already started doing it. They've already been shutting down websites claiming copyright infringement, and they're just going to keep on doing it. And the web is supposed to be a place where information is free and transferred, and we all get to use it for the betterment of society. I mean... What else is it there for? Oh, maybe it's there for Google and Facebook to spy on you and sell your information to large corporations so they could just continue the process of siphoning the money out of your pocket. One more quote here in this article. The White House began to explore an executive order last month after Senate Republicans blocked it. Uh, that was a Joe Lieberman article. Basically, they were going to go after, or Joe Lieberman bill, they're basically going to go after anybody who's posting anything, which I said before. Napolitano Again, urge Congress to enact comprehensive cybersecurity legislation, arguing the White House cannot completely address the threat on its own. An order from the president's office can't offer liability protections to companies which protect them from legal action if they're hit by a cyber attack. And what does all this mean? Well, we know if the government's getting into it, it's going to be bad. We're not looking forward to it. So uh, Moving on, we now got a real creepy story, and this is out of Fox 31 in Denver, Colorado. Stand Up for Kids founder arrested for sexual assault on child. So once again, we have one of the heads of these uh, charities and do-gooder organizations for children has been found to be a pedophile, essentially. Or at least is an alleged pedophile at this point. He's been arrested for sexual assault. So we're going to say he's an alleged pedophile at this point. I don't want to... I don't want to point any fingers, but he's looking pr pretty smug in that photo. And it's always interesting how it's always the heads of these organizations that are supposed to care for the children that we find they prey on the children. Just look at Jerry Sandusky. We covered that one earlier in the week. And um, basically, uh, he was a founder of a nonprofit group that worked with homeless children in 37 cities over two decades. And it's the homeless children without parents to talk to or without people to run to, those, those kids that are not protected, that always end up being the victims and stuff like this because they're, they're preyed upon by predators. These people like this are predators, and they look for easy prey. That's why they go after these kids. 
the Aurora De the Police Department confirmed that Tuesday Richard Coca Sr., who founded Stand Up for Kids in 1990, was taken into custody on September 15th after an investigation that began on August 29th. Authorities said over that period of time they built a case that alleges Coca was committing felony sexual assault on a child he was supervising in Aurora. And, of course, it's a position of trust. And they did give him a high bond, $250,000. He's not going get to get out of there soon. And it's just totally disgusting. And we're going to have more on how the elites and these people in power positions prey on your children. But this time it's more in so that they feel so bad that they want to end up you know, committing suicide or getting to that thing that they're bad for the earth. And we're going to go into that a little bit later. Moving on to some science news. Warp drive may be more realistic than thought and um, basically scientists have worked it out a ring shaped warp drive device could transport a football shaped starship to effective speeds faster than light and this is out of wired magazine so nasa scientists now think that they can make warp drive happen a warp drive would work by warping the space time around any spaceship which physicist miguel acubert showed was theoretically possible in 1994 albeit way beyond the current technical capabilities of humanity However, such Abucare drive was assumed to require more energy equivalent to the mass energy of the whole planet of Jupiter that could ever possibly supply, rendering impossible to build. So, you need the amount of energy equipped or the same size as the mass of Jupiter in order to attain warp drive. Maybe someday we will get there. We won't get there if, well, if all the bees die, because I think it was uh, Albert Einstein said, once the bees go away, we're not too far behind. And now we, we know, mystery of the disappearing bees solved. And it's like what we said all along, most likely something man-made. We were speculating either it's going to be the cell phone towers or pesticides. Well, it turns out it looks like pesticides is the problem. Thousands of scientific sleuths have been on this case for 15 years trying to determine why our honeybees are disappearing, the, which is the biggest general threat to our food supply. Recently, the evidence was inconclusive for colony collapse disorder, but now they think they have a culprit. And it looks like, and interestingly enough, a chemical produced by the German chemical giant Bayer, uh, they create a pesticide that is sprayed on acres of corn, wheat, and cotton seeds. And that seems to be the big problem. It goes in, they're, they're called neonics, and they're absorbed by the plant's vascular system, contaminate the pollen and the nectar, and the bees encounter that on their rounds, and then it messes up their central nervous system. And it basically destroys their homing abilities. So they don't return to the hive with the food. The hive dies, colony collapses, and we're left with less bees than we had before. And they've been, scientists have been sounding the alarm here for a long time with this colony collapse disorder. So hopefully people will get their heads out of their ears and figure this out. We'll stop spraying pesticides on every little thing we can touch and maybe go to more organic forms of growing. Honeybees have been likened to the canaries in the coal mine. They're vanishing as nature's way of telling us that conditions have deteriorated in the world around us. Bees won't survive for long if we don't change our commercial breeding practices and remove deadly toxins from the environment. A massive pollinator die-off would impair the world's food supplies and devastate ecosystems that depend on them. The loss of these creatures might rival uh, climate change and its impact on life on Earth. Well, okay, maybe climate change. You know, the climate does change all along. They didn't say man-made climate change, so I'm more inclined to believe in that. But I tell you, we definitely do have to be looking out for these honeybees. I see them all the time when I'm out, and they don't look good. They look very sick.